Hello, today we're going to learn how to create a user-defined field in Sage 100. We're using Sage 100 2014, which is the latest current edition, but this process hasn't changed for quite some time. We're going to log into Sage 100, and we're going to log in as a regular user. Now this regular user does have administrator and supervisory rights. We're in the regular company ABC Corporation and what I'm going to do is open up my modules and I'm going to go down to custom office. Pretty much every system of Sage 100 now comes with custom office. It's only if you buy a single user system and with module based pricing that you don't get it. But pretty much every installation has custom office. When we open up customer office we see main reports utilities. I'm going to open up main, and under main, if I make this just a little bit wider, you'll be able to see it more easily. I have user defined field and table maintenance. A table is where we can create a table of information which is made up of user defined fields. But in this first lesson, we're just going to create a user defined field. When we open up with this, we see a user defined field and table. And if we've recently created something, we'll see it there. Well, we can open up any one of these tables and we can add something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Accounts Receivable. And here I see under Accounts Receivable all of the different tables that Accounts Receivable uses. I want just to create something simple that I can add onto the Accounts Receivable Customer Master File. So I'm going to go to AR and I'm going to select Customer. And here in this table is called the AR Customer Master. If I double click on that, or I can click on the Edit Fields button, I can do either. If I click on the Edit Fields option, it's going to check through the business objects to see what other additional user defined fields we've already created, and I can see that we've already created two. We can create a large number of user defined fields. What I'm going to do first of all is click on this. Add button, the, the green button here, and when I click on Add, I get to type in the name of the field. So I'm going to call this field Training Field. And when I tab through to the next field, it says Training Field. That's what I want to use it. If I want to remind myself that it's UDF, I can do that. The source for this field is going to be Manual Entry. I could choose to pull it from another business object which means I can pull it from another place within Sage software, but again, that's going to be saved for a later date. Here we're just doing a basic user-defined field. Since it's manual entry, I don't have any other choices, so I can click on OK. Now here, I get to a little bit more interesting screen. I can define the attributes of this special field. I can create what's called a multi-line, which is actually it can be a single line, but I can make the field box larger and have more and more information in it. I can choose a drop box, which means I can have a little box of several choices, where, and I have to set that up in my attributes. I can create a list box or a check box, a yes or a no. This information defines what goes into this particular field, but again, here we're just creating a simple multi-line, and I'm just going to create a single line field. I can create string numeric or date. If it's numeric, it's formatted and I can put a dollar sign in front of it if I want with decimal places. If it's a date, I can choose how the date's going to appear, but here it's going to be 10 decimal, uh, 10 characters long. I'm going to go back to string. If I wanted to create a caption which is user defined training field, and created by training. Well, I don't have a lot of space there, so I guess I'm going to have to do this again. And the next step is to say OK. Now, having created this user defined field, when I click on OK here, the system is going to go out to Sage 100 and see if it can update my tables without affecting any other users. This means that if any other users are using any 
of the AR customer master file, then it will not be able to update. So you may need to do this after hours. You may need to get everybody to log out of the system. I'm going to say OK now. And changes have been made. The data dictionary and UDF fields must be upgraded. So I'm going to say OK. So I'm now updating everything. And this just takes a couple of seconds to go through and do this. Depends how big your files are. This is just a demo company. We don't have very much data. Should be pretty quick. So it keeps on progressing. It's now updating the views, which are the screenshots. This is actually the slowest part of the process. And it will take just a couple of minutes. Now it's going through the ODBC. What this means is that our ODBC tables have all been updated. ODBC means we can access this table within Crystal Reports. If you are using Crystal Reports, you may have to refresh your database in order to see this when you create a new report. To actually make use of this user defined field, we created this in AR Customer Master. So if I go to Accounts Receivable, Main, Customer Maintenance, this is where the AR Customer Master is used. And if I wanted to add my user defined fields to this screen, all I need to do is right mouse click, go to Panel Settings, Customizer, and here I can create a new customized panel just for this company, or I can choose all companies. I'm just going to create it for this company and click on OK. I actually have additional customizations in other databases, but this is only going to be for a BC company. From this panel, I can see this is what the main screen looks like. And these items here are where we can add additional information to the screen. This one here with the check box inside it is Add Field. So I'm going to left mouse click on here and move my cursor over onto my main panel. And using the left mouse again, I'm going to paint a little area. And this is the area. So once I've painted this, I'm releasing the left mouse. And here we are. We can add the fields that we've created. This is the one we created just now, the UDF training field. So I'm going to click on that. And here it is. Now, I see I'm interfering a little bit with my paperless button. Of course, I can just move that around to tidy it up and move it to there. There's my paperless. There's my UDF training field. That, to me, looks pretty good. So over here, I click on the Save button. The customized panel is saved. Click on OK and click on Exit here on the bottom left to go out of my customer panel. So now when I go into Customer Maintenance and I go to any of my customers, oh, here we got a note, but here's my UDF training field. So since we had this and it was 10 characters long, I can type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Oh. I can just put in my 10 characters, and these can be alpha or numeric. So I save that, and when I next go to this customer, there's my information saved in that special field. And remember, this field is available for Visual Integrator. It's available for Crystal Reports, which means we can pull it onto any of the uh, any of the uh, forms that use the Accounts Receivable Customer Master File. In subsequent videos, we're going to look at adding user-defined tables. And we're going to look at using user-defined fields inside Crystal Reports. We're also going to do different types of user-defined fields, such as checkboxes, list boxes, drop boxes. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, I thank you. Uh, if I can help you with any other SAGE 100 issues, you can contact PowerShift Software at support at powershiftsystems.com. Thank you.